The President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, or PEPFAR, celebrates its 21st anniversary on May 27th. In the early 2000s, HIV was viewed as a death sentence. The disease had taken nearly 22 million lives, primarily young people. In 2003, that changed. President Bush signed PEPFAR into law with immense bipartisan support, making it one of the most successful U.S. foreign investment programs since the Marshall Plan. Today, PEPFAR has saved over 25 million lives and allowed over 5.5 million babies to be born HIV-free. It's also a program that goes far beyond global health. It's integrated democracy into its programming and democratic values like civil society involvement. It's also allowed countries to create sustainable health systems, which have helped them to combat other pandemics like COVID-19 and Ebola. This year, Congress reauthorized PEPFAR through 2025, just five years short of our goal to end AIDS by 2030. Many countries are close or have completed the goals of ensuring that 95% of people living with HIV have access to treatment, that 95% of their people know their status, and that 95% of people have undetectable and untransmittable amount of the virus in their blood. This is incredibly important, but some countries continue to face challenges. In 2022, UNAIDS estimated that nearly 39 million people were still living with HIV, and over 630,000 people had died from AIDS just in that year. Young people continue to be at a really high risk of contracting HIV, and HIV remains the number one cause of death for women of a reproductive age. This population is a backbone to our society. They have the opportunity to advance democratic ideas, to contribute to economic sustainability, and to even combat extremism. While 2030 seems like it's a long way away, it's right at our back door. Failure to continue the momentum that we've had over the last 21 years poses significant threats to economic, health, and democratic sustainability. We must continue the fight and remember that HIV continues to be a threat.